All right. Welcome, everybody. I apologize for being a, a little late today. Uh, finishing up with a client, and sometimes it takes just a little bit longer, especially a new client. It takes, sometimes it takes a little bit longer than um, I count on, but I appreciate you all being uh, patient with me today. Um, today, I want to discuss, uh, first off, how was everyone doing with the uh, last meeting we went over, Effective Prayer? How is everyone doing with that? I hope everyone is getting um, some real good usage of knowing how to speak the language that the divine recognizes and start to incorporate that into your life because um, it's, it's very, very powerful. So I hope everyone is um, getting some good use of that. Uh, so um, excellent. Learning more each day. That's exactly right. That's part of the journey. <clears throat> Today, I want to discuss the importance of how important it is to really begin the process of getting along with yourself, okay? Getting along with yourself. When you begin the process of getting along with yourself, um, this is what's going to be a transitory point for you to be able to get along with others. This is the most foundational and important um, important uh, relationship we can have the most foundational important relationship you can have is the relationship with yourself um, i see this in my practice all the time large amounts of people large amounts of patients clients people from all around the world that when i start working with them one of the most common themes that shows up is people just not liking themselves they don't accept themselves on some level uh they don't know how to love themselves they don't um they have a lot of friction and, and you know, tension and things towards themselves more so than they usually do with other people. And this is kind of the beginning. Um, one of the things that I'm starting to do is I'm going to work with a, a large group of doctors over time. And the first thing I'm going to teach these doctors is you have to love yourself because if you don't love yourself and you don't accept yourself fully, if you're full of criticism and you're full of bitterness and you're full of, uh, you know, Con condemnation towards yourself whether you know it or not you're going to reflect that out you're going to give that to other people in ways that um, are nonverbal. you're going to you're going to pass this on to others so that's why one of the healthiest things you can do for yourself your family your clients your business all these things these people around you is begin to work on the relationship you have with yourself um, it impacts so many things it impacts people's health it impacts their life it impacts again every relationship they have every relationship you have has in some part a lot of times this reflection of how you feel about yourself um a woman i know of had a tremendous amount of resentment and she carried a lot of hatred towards her ex-husband and uh this is one of the reasons that that i had um started working with her remember the thought patterns in our mind the thought patterns in our mind are the causative factors that create the results in our life, okay? It's the mental body that does that. And the mental patterns that are lodged in the subconscious mind responsible for creating the most disease in the body are criticism, anger, resentment, guilt. And these kind of mental patterns held for long enough will always, always show up in the physical form throughout some kind of symptom eventually leading to pathology spilling over into pathology and this woman had held these uh mental patterns of hatred and resentment for a long time and eventually getting to the point where uh, she was told by her doctor that she had developed a very serious lesion now why simple she was resisting the free-flowing source of the life principle, which moves through the body and flows in harmony with things like peace, and harmony, joy, beauty, and love. Her resentment that she had held acted like a block, just like a block, preventing that infinite healing process of flowing through us. It, it prevented that. Uh, it prevented that healing uh, power flowing through her. And with some deeper work, 
she came to the uh, she came to the understanding that the mind and body are one. And she decided to start praying effectively using feeling, using heart. She started to say things like, uh, I surround my, I, I surrender my husband to the God presence fully, lovingly, freely. When she would think of her ex-husband, that there was a lot of tension and, and remorse and things like that there, a lot of anger. She would say, I surrender my husband to the God, God presence fully, lovingly, and freely. And she had begun to adjust her thinking and her intentions. She started to claim, infinite healing source that created me from a single cell knows the processes, knows the functions, knows the roles within my body. It knows how to heal. Just as the scripture says, the scripture says, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. And this healing power fills my mind, my heart, and I am made whole and perfect. No, that's a healing prayer. That's a very powerful healing prayer. And she felt as if her body was already healed. And what she did was, as she would say this, she would feel it, feel as if her body was already healed. And the process of this, she was able to drop all those mental patterns of resentment towards him. She was able to feel as though she was already whole and perfect. And upon her return to the doctor, uh, the examination that he gave her showed that that lesion had completely disappeared. Okay. So this is how it works. There are too many of us out there today that do not like ourselves. We just don't like ourselves. Uh, people don't like who they are. They are always focusing on their faults, uh, their shortcomings. They're always, you know, thinking about their weaknesses, where they come up short. Many times they're constantly just focusing on mistakes they made, failures in the past, and just constantly in this cycle of wishing things were different. Uh, instead of accepting themselves as a masterpiece, instead of accepting themselves as a masterpiece made in the image of God, they're critical towards themselves and then they wonder why they aren't happy. Many times they sit down, they just wonder why they're not happy. Uh, they wonder why they have really poor health. They wonder why they don't have good relationships. It all comes down to this. It's because they don't like themselves. And if you don't get along with you, if you don't get along with you, you are not going to get along with other people. Jesus said, love your neighbor. And in this case, I just shared your former spouse. As you love yourself, you cannot love others if you don't first love yourself. That's like you trying to pour from an empty cup. It just won't happen. The most significant gift you can do that will benefit others, including your family and your friends, is to be good to yourself. Begin to the process of just learning to be good to yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be forgiving to yourself. Don't, don't compliment somebody else without also complimenting yourself. Don't admire any talent of somebody else without taking time to admire your own talents and abilities. These are not selfish things. And it's not arrogant in, in, these, in thinking this way. It is simply ways of showing love for yourself. And all too often, people go through their life against themselves. They feel wrong about who they are, and they feel wrong about you know, what they've done, and they beat themselves up. Here's the key to understand. As we go through life, there's going to be plenty of situations and people and circumstances that, that almost seem to come against us. People that turn our, their back to us. People that let us down. People that, um, uh, you know we depended on and they they let us down this is going to happen and no matter what uh this there's going to be things that oppose us situations that come up that are less than ideal so this is all part of life and no matter what it's going to happen the key is don't be the one who is all who is also against yourself Okay, when you focus on anything negative about yourself, it's never going to improve any outcome of your life, period. Reliving past failures, mistakes you made with people, 
um, opportunities that you had that were presented with, and maybe you either blew them or you sabotaged them. Thinking about these things are not going to help you move forward in any way, shape, or form. The more, and this is again, how our bodies react, how this, the language of our heart through our feelings speak to the, the, the pieces that our universe is made of, the building blocks that the entire universe, including us and people are made of, the more that you begin to like yourself and accept yourself for who you are, the more advancements and the further that you will go. The better you feel about who you are, the better you feel about yourself, the better you will do in all other areas of your life. You cannot give away what you don't have. If you're mad at yourself, criticizing yourself for things, and and just holding on to these negative judgments, maybe jealousy of others, this is what you're always going to be able, this is what you're always going to give to others. This is what you're always going to, in large part, reflect out to others. If you're hard on yourself, do you know that you'll also be hard on others? It's just the way it is. If you criticize yourself all day long, you'll always find things to criticize about others. If you cannot forgive yourself, you won't be able to forgive others. That's just the way it is. If you do not get along with yourself, how can you possibly think you'll get along with others? So the best step that you can do is to begin being for you, being for yourself. When you learn how to first love yourself, you'll know how to love others. It doesn't happen before. Many times we're trying to do that. When you see yourself with compassion, when you see yourself with kindness, you'll naturally start to begin to see compassion and kindness in others as well. It always starts with you. Stop looking at external things. It always starts with you. Yeah, and some people might think, oh, Gabe, I've got a family history of problems. Alcoholism runs in my family. I've got these setbacks. I've got, I was abused as a kid. Um, I got these addictions. I got these weaknesses. You know, at once once I can develop more discipline, then I'll be able to accept myself. Once I can start, I can I can stop criticizing myself and I can break free of this addiction, then I can start, um, you know, start to enjoy myself more. That's a that's an excuse. Here's the here's an important piece to understand. If you're stuck in limbo, if you're waiting to improve, uh, to improve something about your performance to, to become more perfect, before you ever begin to feel good about yourself, you're going to be waiting indefinitely. You'll be waiting forever. You have to learn to begin to accept yourself during the process of changing. The source of all life knew you would have these challenges and weaknesses. God knew you would have all these weaknesses and these challenges in life. I mean, God created you. You're not a surprise. It's not like God is surprised by the things you do, the shortcomings you have, the mistakes you make. You think God, the source of infinite intelligence, ever sits back, and raises one eyebrow up, looks at you and thinks, man, I didn't expect that. Boy, there, she's in a real mess now. I don't know what to do with him. You think infinite intelligence ever assumes that kind of role? No. There's tests in the universe, and and infinite intelligence knew these challenges would be there for us. That's what Earth is. You want to know what Earth is? I've in the last uh, week, I've had three people tell me this. I just don't feel like I'm supposed to be here. When we do some deeper work and we go into, you know, getting to the deeper core of their mind, they always say, I, I just, I'm, it's a mistake me being here. I'm not supposed to be here. They're talking about their role on earth. You know what I have to tell them? But you are here. I understand completely. Your soul came here for a reason. And that reason is earth is a trauma school for us. It's a trauma school. It's meant to be challenging. Okay, you're not supposed to live life by criticizing yourself, beat yourself up because you haven't yet reached your destiny, you know, because you haven't yet reached the promised land. You haven't yet reached where your soul is heading to. Come to think of it, I don't know anyone 
I don't know anyone who's arrived to their destiny yet. I don't know anyone who's done it. Okay? There will always be some area in our life that we need to be better, that we need to improve. A spot where we always need to, um, you know, look at and and improve at. And, and the universe will leave these spots. It'll leave these glimpses that will show up in our life as weaknesses, as weaknesses, where things get exposed. And this happens on purpose, by design. And it's to the point, sometimes it gets to the point where you are going to need God. You're going to need uh, those areas that show up, You that are going to show up in you. They're going to show up specifically so you depend on God. Sometimes people never do that until their their back is so against the wall that they're just buried and they don't have any other options. And that's when they finally release. That's when they finally give up. That's when they finally surrender. Those are those moments. It's these moments that change you. And if you're going to evolve, if you're going to do what you're meant to do, you got to learn to enjoy these little tests. You have to learn how to, to sh enjoy these tests that show up. My wife and I have learned this so much that whenever a test shows up, whenever a challenging person comes in our way or something just shows up that's, you know, an obstacle, maybe an, a, an obstacle in our, our life in some way, you know what we say? You know what our go-to response is? I can't wait for you to show us, to, to show us how you deal with this. I'm not going to carry it. I don't have to sit here and get worried and all this other worked up about it. I can't wait to see how you handle this problem because we immediately pass it off to divine. We immediately pass it off to God. That's what you want to do is learn how to enjoy these tests as they show up in life. Okay. You may not be where you want to be right now, but you can always be thankful that you're not where you used to be. You can always look back and think where you used to be compared to where you are now. Give yourself credit for that growth. Life is much too short to go through it and be against yourself because God approves of you right now where you are with shortcomings and all God approves of all of that your faults your mistakes uh, you know it's it, God doesn't approve of you when you overcome those things God approves of you right here right now at this moment your soul came here for a journey a journey that you are still on and still much a part of. Now it's, you know, understand that God accepts you for who you are. Now it's time to fully accept yourself. Again, some people are so focused on their shortcomings, the flaws they have, the mistakes they make, the times that they've missed opportunities. And all these things do is to continue uh, an ongoing cycle of negativity, something that has uh, it's detrimental to growth. The wrong perception is always playing in their minds over and over and over and over again. And it begins with how we condition ourselves. I had to condition myself to where if something happens, I immediately pass it off to God. No matter how big of a speed bump in life it may be, sometimes it's sometimes it's there. And I sit there and say, I can't wait to show me how this problem is going to be solved. You know? And I get out of the way. It's on how we condition ourselves. Try a new approach. Begin to focus on the times when you did achieve something that was really important to you. Start to think about successes you had. Think about times in your life when you really, really wanted something. You had a strong desire to achieve something. And you started moving towards that. You started moving towards that. You made steps toward it. And you absolutely nailed it. There's moments in your life when that's happened. Start to condition your mind to think of those times, even if it was years ago. Okay, Don't dwell on the negative and let it occupy your mind and your, your precious energy. Because here's the truth. You can never have any kind of positive result. You can't produce a positive result of any way if your mind is focused on the negative. You cannot fulfill your soul's destiny. You cannot fulfill your soul's destiny if you've conditioned yourself to only focus on the shortcomings of your life. There are many forces at work here, ones that constantly 
play those shortcomings, show you those things where the faults, the defects are, ones that the enemy uses so cleverly, you don't even, sometimes you don't even know they're at work, but don't allow it to go unnoticed. Take a break from social media, turn off the TV, turn off the media. These are all things meant to remind you of shortcomings, okay? Another important point is circumstances, situations, and events may put you down and throw you off. People can turn against you, maybe even come against you. That's all part of life. The deeper, more sinister problem here is if you are against you. Okay? The things that happen in life, the circumstances, people, those things happen. Sometimes it's, you know, sometimes... Those are part of life and they're a little easier to get over. But the deeper, more sinister problem is if you are against you, if you are your own worst enemy, if you have conditioned yourself to be in a negative state towards yourself, I promise you that's going to keep you from fulfilling your destiny. Each one of us, without exception, without exception, are divine, magnificent beings, expressions of life, all of us, every one of us. And when we look at each other, each face is a different, unique expression of God. And we are not supposed to be alike. We're not supposed to have the same traits, the same personalities. Now, think about this. Is it possible? Is it possible that you're resisting something about you that makes you unique? Is it something that is it possible that you're resisting something about you that makes you unique? Are you frustrated about? What you think is a shortcoming or a weakness when actually it's a strength that you're not recognizing. Quit quit wishing you were something different. Quit wishing you were someone else and step into what God made you to be. He did not accidentally make some mistake with you and somehow make you defective. Okay? God gave you everything you need to fulfill your destiny. He gave you everything you need to fulfill your destiny. Don't go another day wishing you were different, wishing for something else. Don't fight what God made you to do and who God made you to be. It's just a waste of time. And here's the here's another thing. As a doctor who has worked with naturopathic stuff and and natural modalities, herbs and muscle testing and all these other things, one of the common things that I've always been told by different mentors who taught me how to muscle test and use nutrition on the body is that the body doesn't make mistakes. The body doesn't make mistakes. You know, in other words, the divine doesn't make mistakes. Okay. We can look at things and we can always question. Some people will tell me this. What about children with cancer? What about people that are born, born and they have, uh, you know, defects and they're, and they're born with, um, you know, tremendous uh, deformities and things like that. What about that? If that's not a mistake, God knew what he was doing. Those are old souls meant to teach new souls lessons. They knew what they were doing. Don't let your conscious lying rational mind get in the way and make you think that you have any idea what's going on because God doesn't make mistakes. So whenever we criticize ourselves. When we're criticizing our shortcomings, when we're focused on the things that don't make sense and we're focused on the things we don't like, we're actually criticizing divine intelligence. We are criticizing that creative capacity. So make the decision today. Don't say another negative thing about yourself. You're basically criticizing God when you do. Now, does anyone have any questions? relevant brief questions related to any of this anyone have any questions any statements did everyone by a show of hands did somebody get something out of this today all right perfect excellent because that's what we need to recognize is is the training that i am doing with doctors right now it's not about how to get pay, how to how to get better results with patients it's going to be focused on how to get better results with yourself really how to go inside 
learn how to love yourself because even us as doctors, even us as doctors, many of us are carrying the same problems that our patients are. We just might disguise it a little better. But many times doctors, professionals of all kinds don't fully accept themselves, don't love themselves fully. And again, if they don't, they're going to pass that on. So my focus is teaching people how to love themselves better because here's the thing. If you can start to love yourself better, it can pretty much start to solve many of the problems that you'll be faced with in life. Excellent. Well, thank you all for joining me today, and I will see you all next week.